Adam Savage once said, drawers are where tools go to die. It's easy to forget where something goes when nothing is labeled. So let's change that. This is the X-Tool F1 Ultra, and today I'll use this unique tool to get more organized, show some gifts off I've made over the last couple months, go over some unique advantages of a fiber laser, and discuss some cool features in the X-Tool ecosystem. An important step in organization is labeling. You might be thinking, just grab a label maker. While this tool does get the task done, I think using 3D printers and lasers is just more fun. Also, these labels have a nicer aesthetic than the thermal labels. They're definitely more durable. And using 3D printed blanks and engraving on them is faster and more efficient than doing color changes with a 3D printer. These blank tags are just black PETG. It can be engraved with a fiber laser on the F1 Ultra. There's also a diode laser in this machine, but it just melts the plastic, so it's not a very useful label. Then I use some 3M VHB tape on the back of the prints, and they stick really well to the StackTech drawers. If you don't have a 3D printer, a nice alternative are aluminum business card blanks. The black version turns to silver, and the gold also matches nicely with StackTech's colors. But you might want to use red business cards for a different system. I have a couple diode lasers, but the F1 Ultra is quite a bit different and a big upgrade in a few ways. With the addition of a fiber laser to my arsenal, I can finally easily customize metal. I have a couple more examples and tips in just a bit. This is my first X-Tool product, and I'm impressed. They did send it to me, but they won't be seeing this video before it's uploaded. From the unboxing experience to the final build quality, you can tell this product is top notch. I love the aluminum body, threaded base plate holes, included cutting panel, and easy to use touch screen. My only gripe is that I wish they included two corner brackets, or even if the brackets had slots in them instead of holes for more adjustments like mounting at a 45 degree angle. X-Tool also does extensive testing on their machines to make sure they function for a long time and survive almost anything on the way to your house. The F1 Ultra is expensive, I know that, but this laser is like a sports car. The F1 Ultra starts at $36.99 and goes up to $49.99 with accessories like the air purifier, conveyor belt, and rotary. The new AP2 is $1,000 by itself, so it just makes sense to get it as a package deal. The stats and construction of the AP2 are also way better than this older air purifier, which is still pretty good, so that's really exciting. If the F1 Ultra is like a Ferrari, there are obviously cheaper options that will get you to the same place. But by spending more, you really benefit in a few areas. Speed, software, and safety. The F1 Ultra has a fiber and diode Galvo laser. This means there are mirrors inside the machine controlling the beam compared to the laser head moving side to side on a mechanical system. So the overall work area is smaller than a traditional gantry diode or CO2 laser, but it can move much faster in the designated area. The Ultra is bigger and more powerful than the standard F1. The work area is 220 by 220, but they can be expanded with the conveyor. I'll be talking more about the conveyor in a future video, so like and subscribe if you want to see that. Another thing that makes the X-Tool ecosystem so fast and convenient is the impressive integration with X-Tool Creative Space. I've been using Lightburn for a couple years now, so I'm still getting used to X-Tool Creative Space, but overall it's easy to use, has tons of features, and it's free. Obviously the cost of the software is wrapped into the cost of the machine, but I think that's fine. Having an integrated ecosystem just makes the user experience a little bit simpler and easier. From simple tasks like text and basic shapes, to material tests, QR code generators, and more, it's all at your fingertips. Another huge advantage is the seamless integration with DesignFind, a repository of uploaded designs for all kinds of projects. It's great for inspiration or saving time if something is exactly what you were looking for. And something else I'll be talking more about in future videos is AI Make, 
It can generate designs from text inputs or optimize previous images for laser engraving tasks like deep embossing. And arguably the most important detail is safety. As laser engraving has been growing in popularity the last few years, I've seen tons of people getting into it but not taking safety seriously. The green glass is important for protecting your eyes and the rear vent combined with the air purifier makes laser engraving a much safer experience. Depending on how much you care about those three factors, the F1 Ultra might not be a perfect fit for a basic hobby user, but I think it can really shine in a small business like mine where safety, ease of use, and speed is important. It's also a great option for schools. I would have loved using something like this in middle school or high school. With a cheaper open frame laser, you need to make sure everyone is wearing glasses or you need to build a custom enclosure. If there's going to be a bunch of students around, it's not going to be the easiest thing to make sure everyone is wearing them. That's why I really like the integrated glass, and you can enable a sensor that stops the machine when it's raised up. I still go back and help sometimes with projects at my old high school, and the convenience and safety of this laser just makes more sense if I brought it there. Alright, now let's get into some projects. If you're lacking any ideas, one of the X-Tool material kits is a great way to get started. There are different packages available with tons of materials and different colors of some of the items. There are literally pages and pages of items you can get and bulk discounts are available if you want to make and sell your own custom products. The brochure in the materials kit includes the names of the materials and some basic setting guidelines which is helpful. Also in Creative Space there is a lot of preset materials with material tests already loaded. You can click on your desired square and it automatically updates the settings. Let's start with something easy, a slate coaster. The diode or fiber laser can be used with slate and the results are going to be pretty similar. I've seen some people do deep engraving on these slate coasters and it often looks really cool, but it's interesting that the material guide says not to do it. I did a couple small tests and it creates a ton of dust. I think it's gonna clog the filter faster, but anything going into the filter is better than going into your workshop or your lungs. These anodized aluminum business cards come in a bunch of different colors and can be engraved using the diode or fiber laser. I found a business card design on Design Find and then added my own QR code and tool image using Creative Space tools. I think it's pretty neat how accurate the Galvo laser head is from just the single starting spot. And I'll definitely be making some more functional business cards to hand out to people in the future. One of my favorite simple items are these patches. They engrave really nicely and the included 3M adhesive on the back sticks well to a variety of surfaces. An advantage with the F1 Ultra is the high precision laser beam. The impressive detail you can achieve is evident on engravable black and white photo paper. Just make sure to invert your image before sending it to the machine. Something I helped my sister make recently was 25 custom leather notebooks. It's easy to do large batches of the same design because it just takes a double tap of the X tool button to restart your latest job. The fiber laser is best at metal and plastic projects. This black microphone case turned to a nice lighter color for an easy to read permanent label. I've used the fiber laser to remove coatings and light rust on steel as well as engraving. I recommend doing material test arrays when testing new materials. The main settings to change are speed and power, but something else I learned makes a big difference with the quality of metal engravings is the frequency. When it's turned down, it's rougher and leaves a less desirable surface finish. But with the frequency and lines print up higher, I got some really nice, much darker black texts on the plain steel. If you're going to engrave a lot of steel, I also found these rubber coated magnets with M3 threads. They go directly into the base plate and then can hold your steel workpiece nice and flat. I also engraved the steel scraper with two different settings. It's a nice reminder to wear glasses when scraping off 3D prints because the little pieces of plastic can really go flying. The fiber laser can also engrave on aluminum. This is a component of one of my products and I can easily add some extra instructions to the bottom of this plate now. 
Unfortunately, you can't really get dark engravings on aluminum from just a laser, but you can get a black marking spray that when lasered will leave a permanent black mark. I have some on the way for a future video. It might be tempting to cut wood with this laser since it has really good fume extraction, but since it is a Galvo laser, the cuts will have an angle on them. The further away from the center of the machine, the more drastic the angle will be. The 20 watt diode laser cut well, but if you want to cut a lot of materials, and especially if they're thicker, this laser won't be great for that. Another metal item that benefited from engraving was this cheap socket set. The stock numbers, especially on the smaller sockets, were hard to read. But with some fiber lasering, these sockets got leveled up. And one last metal thing that I really liked from the material kit were these steel bookmarks. The framing function makes it really easy to do multiple engravings on a single workpiece. Because you can do the first one, see how you like it, then place it back down in the perfect spot with the framing function. Hopefully you got some inspiration from this video. I'll have all the materials I used linked down below, and by using my affiliate links, it helps me prioritize making more laser-focused content in the future. So, what do you think about the X-Tool F1 Ultra? I know it's an expensive machine. It's not for everyone, but if you're like me and value safety and convenience, it might be worth your investment. I've had fun using this machine for a couple of months now, and I've just scratched the surface of fiber laser engraving. I have some more content coming soon, so let me know if you have any questions or project ideas that I can talk about in the future. Thanks for watching.